From Cornwall to Birmingham and Johnston and Bexhill, here's Ruben Spar on the radio. Hey to Russell Kitchen Music. How are you today? Well, good, thank you. All, all good. I'm happy to happy to finally uh, sit down and have a chat with you. It's been uh, been two or three months in the organising, so it's been so busy, but uh, it's nice to be here. I hear you have some uh, good news today. Indeed, yes. Um, uh, uh, anybody that's that's followed Badlands for a, a while will know that uh, uh, our bass player, in fact, in fact, the guys played music with me for over, oh, crikey, for over fifteen years, uh, in one form or another, in a, in a previous band, Slow Gin, and one or two other bands as well. Uh, Tris Braddo was our bass player. He had a stroke before Christmas Last 22. Um, and he's unfortunately left the band. Um, but obviously I've, I've kept in touch, been to see him and keep seeing him and following his rehabilitation and keep going out to, to see him. Uh, and today, a year later, more than a year or so later, um, I've be, actually been out for a walk with him today. And he's uh, uh, he, he's up, he's actually walking about in the out, outdoors. He's got himself a new uh, bungalow where he can, uh, get out and about more often, so he, he's he's really on the mend, and it's he, I'm, I'm really really chuffed for the guy, uh, and I just want to give him a shout out because he uh, he was a, a big 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 supporter, a, a, a big part of Badlands, and and he always will be. So uh, yeah, really really pleased to be able to go and, uh, uh, and and report back on that. So can you tell me more about uh, Badlands country? I can. Um, Badlands is. It, it, it came out, I mean, for years and years, 20 plus years, I've played uh, on the country circuit as a as a lead guitarist, a uh, harmony vocalist, first and foremost. And before that. And before that, in previous bands, in, in, in band, other guises, rock blues, bands. rock bands, but for many years, but certainly on the country circuit for a long, a long time, I played as a, as a, a lead guitarist uh, and, uh, and harmony singer, and I started to sing more songs, and eventually it got to the point where I, I really wanted to be uh, in the middle of it and, and doing it all, and I just got a passion for the more upbeat, the more the more rockier side of it, the you know the the, the, the sort of the, the the livelier side of country music, uh, and I felt that, that the circuit needed a a band with that brand of music in it, which um, I spent a long time looking to try and find the the, the right players. And in 2016, Badlands came about with uh, myself and Ash Thompson, who's still on drums with me now. Uh, and Pete and Phil, who were the two uh, on bass and uh, rhythm guitar, respectively, and we uh, we finally went out and about in in 2016, um, playing that kind of music. You know, the, a good mix of my styles, my my favourite artists, all covers at the time: uh, Marty Stewart, Alan Jackson, you know, people like that. But but the rockier versions of songs as well that we were, were quite happy to delve into and modern country. Uh, you know that that uh, that wasn't really being serviced and done. I, I mean, I love Brad Paisley, uh, obviously Vince Gill, but again, the rockier side, uh, that kind of stuff, and that that's really what Badlands was was born out to be. Um, it's it, it did we it kicked off well, and and uh, well, then I turned up and destroyed it. Well, Heather, <laughs> it's, uh, Heather Heather joined us actually as sound engineer originally, um, since she was because I oh, also really wanted mean. I also wanted the band to be. The show itself to be elevated and be more than just you know sort of turn up and with the least amount of gear and, and do what you do. It's not a criticism, by the way. That is just how things are these days um, because it's what's needed. Uh, but I wanted to be able to to, to really uh, you know put a show on and, and not be thinking about the sound, just think about the playing. And it's and hard to turn off sound engineer mode when you've been doing it. Really, it really, really is. Time. It really, really is because uh, I've done a lot of that work as well. I've, I've mixed festivals and uh, you know and worked with some. Through a friend of mine, Pete Steele at Premier, I worked worked with some. I got to work with people like Larry Gatlin, with people like uh, Gene Watson, Jerry oh, Kilgore, right. Albert Lee, yeah, uh, and and to work on you know to work the desk for all these people. It was uh, a real good part of my upbringing actually uh, in country music. Um, but when you're doing that, you're thinking like a sound engineer. And you're not thinking like a player. So I'm trying to 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 not be one and be the other. And and Heather stepped in to do that. Uh, she'd just come out of college where she'd done a music I am, degree. I fully empathise because I'd been doing that for a while where I was playing lead guitar in a band, but also doing the sound when we were at pubs, which is, it's just very chaotic, mm. very stressful. Nice yep. to only do one of the jobs instead of... Yep. Uh, so we got Heather doing that, and then uh, and then we had a, a one f a fateful weekend, I think 2019, and uh, Phil the guitarist was unavailable for a weekend, and we got 
only three small gigs lined up, Whitby Festival, uh, Quick Draw Festival, and down in Malvern uh, at the uh, at the motorhome show, they went, and that particular gig, I think two and a half thousand people. And we said to Heather, we're a bit stuck. Can you learn, I don't know, songs. 60 songs in, in two hours. days? Yeah, 24 it, hours, essentially. Pretty much. Get something down so that we can put a show on for these people. So she stepped up. Did an absolutely amazing job for us, and then uh... now you can't get shot of me. <laughs> That's true. Um, so, so yeah, so she's she's been by my side since 2019, and that's allowed the band to develop. Um, we've got uh, we've now got to a point where we've got twin lead guitar, uh, twin harmony vocal, twin lead vocal, male and female. We kind of we cover all ba- all bases with it, and then you know. A, a, Ash with a uh, rock steady on the drums, and then uh, and then Tris, who used to be in the band. Of course, we've now got uh, a good friend of mine, Julian Wood, upon bass guitar, who was very versatile, and he's oh. taken it even a stage further because we, we've just brought him into uh, singing a couple of songs as well. So now we've got three. Uh, so we, and, and, and of course, adding that, th- and we start, we just started. We're working nicely now on three part harmonies. So it's, it, it's one more guitarist, and we can be Leonard Skinner. <laughs> So it's coming. It's coming quite nicely as we uh, as, as we sort of head into twenty four. Um, you know, we'll, we'll keep on developing it, and and that's the important thing, Ruben, for me is is that it's got to keep developing. We've you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm kind of ambitious in that respect. Where it, I come off stage at the end of a gig thinking, okay, we did that. What could I do better? Or you know, what could we do better to improve it? Or what's the next step? That that's kind of what what drives me quite a lot. You know, music is all about discovery and. Uh, and, and, and that, that's you know that's really what I want to keep keep doing. I guess you never stop learning, do you? You absolutely don't. No, there's 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 no such thing as as somebody that knows it all. <laughs> there really isn't. Not in music. So, um, can you tell me what uh, gigs you got coming up with uh, Badlands Country? Well, Badlands are fairly quiet. We are uh, January, February. Most of the time is it's it's one or two duo gigs that. Uh, uh, myself and Heather will be doing, but uh, but a lot of the time I'm spending writing material for my second solo album, original album, uh, and getting ready for for, for the uh, the pre production and actually going to the studio sometime. Hopefully, the end of this month, start of next month, to get on with that. Um, but then I think we've I think we've got a couple. We've got one in uh, Wakefield, uh, sort of early early February with the band, but it really kicks into gear in March because you know a lot of the stuff that we do we tend to be tend to sort of be look for the festivals and uh, uh, and one or two one or two other gigs like that up in, in into Scotland and one or two it, it, that's the kind of so the, the kind of thing we're doing but there's 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 plenty of music to come uh it looks like being a busy year particularly for me and Heather as a duo and uh, and then as I say as I say, as, the, as the year goes on we'll we'll be picking more and more gigs up and uh, yeah, and as I said, we'll be out. Uh, we'll be out in a tent somewhere at a festival near you. I think we've got Cree Town coming up as uh, as one of the biggies this year. That's that's coming up towards Easter. So there's plenty. We've got plenty to go at. And uh, my job over this weekend is to update the website and let people know where we are because uh, <laughs> I've not been very very good at the, at the last twelve months at keeping the keeping the gig diary up to date. So got to yeah. get on with it. There's no point asking me. I just like get bundled into the van and then I turn up at a gig, play the gig, <laughs> then I get bundled back in the van, get some chicken nuggets, go home. <laughs> I could not tell anyone dates and times of anything. Well, that's true. That's very true. That's your job. Yes. I just, I sing, I play, I mix. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, Badlands is going to do its thing this year. Uh, it, it's, and hopefully, as we keep on pushing, we keep on developing the show, we'll just get keep getting bigger and better. Ooh, and given that Nat's uh, started getting into the lighting aspect. Uh, and of course, of it, yeah. yeah. Uh, as, as well as this Heather, Natalie, my other daughter, she is constantly around the band now. She's taken, picked up the mantle that Heather put down. So she runs sound for us. I promise I'm not just pawning all the work off on my little sister. I promise. Yeah. That's 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 absolutely not what it mm. is. So, maybe a little yeah. bit. So, uh, yeah. So we keep it in the family, but um, yeah, it keeps it tight. It keeps it good. So can you tell me more about your debut single called Home? <sighs> yeah. Home. Um, ambition for... Uh, it's This This has been a while coming. Um I needed, as well as learning to play the covers and learning the the, the music, some phenomenal music. I always felt that I needed to do. I said, I said about the development. I needed to 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 fight to, to write my own. I needed to be uh, putting pen to paper. I needed to be to be turning some of my own music out because I always felt that, that it was there to be done, and it was a great next stage of my development. And 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 in in a lot of ways. So uh, 
one of the very first songs I ever wrote was Home, which was um, a tribute to Paul and my wife, actually, because as I said, I said let's, let's keep it in the family. Every time I go out to, to a gig somewhere, Paul is with us. Shout um, out to Mom, best yeah. merch lady in the business. Yeah, yeah. She keeps everything together. I'm very lucky that my entire family travels to gigs with me, but, uh, but the song was written for Paula because anybody that's played music and live music will know that it's not about turning up and playing the gig. You're either driving to a, to a gig, from a gig, rehearsing, learning material, recording material, chasing new gear, repairing gear that's broken, loading up, unloading, all the stuff that you've got to do. It's a, it's a full-time it's a full time job. And being in a band on the UK country circuit doesn't support a full-time wage. So you're doing a full-time job and a full-time job. Uh, so so there's not a lot of time together. So it was just a... A bit of a, a, a nod to Paul and a thank you for for putting up with lots of hours of me, of me in particular, but the, but not being there or everything getting shortened or or holidays that have been planned getting kicked to the back because there's a gig coming or something like that, and um, just a celebration of the time that we do get to spend together, and and that drove me on to write that song, and uh, yeah, and there's a video that came out from it from Take One Studios as well. It's on YouTube, and I, I just. It just means it, it does mean a lot to me that song because of who it was written for. So, continue on more about um, falling. We're all coming off my album, uh, which is wherever you are. Falling was <sighs> what I like about falling is it's one of those songs that was so spur of the moment. It was. It was spur of the moment. I think technically the writing happened in about an hour in total. It did. It since did. You, you showed up, at, we were at C2C, I believe. You walk out of the Indigo for half an hour and I'm like, where the hell's dad gone? Can't find him. Came back, he's like, I've wrote a song. And it was, it was that, it was that, as quick as that. I got the, I got the bones of it down in, uh, while well, literally walking around the, uh, the hospitality area in, in, in C2C, in the O2 in London. Um, again, the, the, the subject material is, is exactly the same. It's, uh, it, it's about, it's about uh, spending time with Paula. And we've been together 30, 34 years in May this year. Uh, and so it's, it, it was just a, a great song song to write. It's a modern country song. It, it brought me and it spurred me on. Once once I got into it, I went to it when we went to the studio, and I'll come on to Martin in a while, but uh, we took, I went to, to, to the studio to Martin, the producer, and I said, and we were looking at, at what else to put on the album. And I said, I've got this. I've got this song. I've kind of got it this is the bulk of it and i said there you go i played it for him and he went i said but it's not finished and he went right we're finishing it now it's got to go on the album and uh, and we did sat there in the studio i put the rest of the words to it we uh, we tweaked it and turned it in about half an hour so. it was so that so the whole thing was written in an hour uh it just sort of just just sort of fell out of me if, if you like for want of a better description and uh and then once we started to put to put the the musicians on it and put the music to it, it really really grew up and it became a it's a modern country song. It's quite, I, I love it. I absolutely love the thing. It's it's now become the show closer uh, for both the duo work for my own uh, uh, solo material good. gigs and actually the last couple of gigs last year it became the closer for the band as well. So it's crept in there a little bit as well. And again. Um, Great video by the guys at Long Choke that they put that together for us. One freezing cold summer afternoon up, <laughs> up in the hills, up up away from uh, going across the Pennines, uh, and we, uh, we we sat there for like four hours waiting for the perfect sunset golden hour yeah, moment. Yeah. And the closing shots of it that we managed to get were uh, Dad throwing his guitar then at me and Nat, and we were sprinting up the road because literally the rain we could see coming down in a sheet towards us, so yeah. we were sprinting up a hillside. Yeah, so but it's, it's a fabulous video. Uh, the guys did an amazing job with that. And uh, as I said, it's now, it's it's gone over 5,000 views on YouTube, which for an independent artist uh, with a new song, I, I think it's, I am, I'm, I'm quite proud of that, to be honest. I'm really quite proud of that. And it's, it's been a great song for me this year. So can you tell me more about uh, Strongest Hands? Uh, yes. Uh, <sighs> Strongest Hands was, well, it's a tribute. Um, Strongest Hands was written 10 years ago, nearly. Well, it is over 10 years ago now. Um, and it's uh, a tribute to my dad, uh, who passed away uh, in August 2013. Um, Heather's granddad, of course. I wrote the song straight after that and 
couldn't sing it because I just, it just, just the, the emotion were there, and I wrote it as a as a closure for me, as a you know, to to to, to sort of help me put things into perspective. Um, and it sat quietly ever since, sat and tucked away on my computer somewhere as a demo. And and again, back to the back to the album. I went back to Martin. I said, "What do you think to this?" And he went, "Yeah, we we need to we need to do this song." Um, so I went back and I thought, "Well, okay." My dad, who was obviously important to me, uh, he also had granddaughters, four of them, uh, two from my two and my sister's two, and uh, they meant the world to him, and he meant the world to them. And ten years ago, Heather and Nat weren't probably not old enough really to articulate quite what how they felt at the time. Uh, but then I thought, if we're really going to make this a song, it needs to be span the generations. So I asked Heather and Nat, both of them, as I say, Heather's got a degree in music and Nat's got a degree in creative writing. Um, they're a better place than anybody. I said, Give me your thoughts in a verse. Well, let's look at that. Let's see, you know, come from your point of view and, you know, tell me what you felt about your granddad. And that's what they did. And then as soon as I read it, I thought, well, there's only one way this has got to go now, and that is... Heather, who obviously is leading the band with me now these, these days, I mean, a phenomenal voice, a phenomenal guitar player. It had to be, it had to be a, a duet. It just had to be. There's only her could sing it and, and deliver it that way. And she uh, she manages to get through every song. Every every time we do it, we manage to get through the thing, don't we? And uh, uh, it's a properly emotional song. And and to be honest, I've cried uh, every time we've played we have. it. I've cried every time. I and, know. And to be honest, when we get asked for that song now at every gig, um, and we always do it purely acoustic, uh, just just and a couple of so two acoustic guitars, nothing else. Um, uh, and it just reflects my dad. He was uh, he he was the very centre of my life, and and you know, then then of course as I grew, and uh, and then. Equally, he meant so much to the girls. Uh, as I say, he was the strongest hands bit. He was a slaughterman, uh, a butcher. Uh, that was his trade. And then he uh, he worked and worked after he'd finished his job to, to go and do a second uh, to, to work again as a as a, a mechanic. You know, as a, a, a an enthusiast. Uh, and that's how he that's how he doing two jobs and working literally working two jobs at times to to make sure that he fed his family and gave them the best that he could. And that's that's where strongest hands came from. And uh, yeah, very again, uh, it's a song I'm really, really proud of. Really proud of. So, can you tell me more about your producer? Oh, Martin. Yeah, well, Martin was once I'd learned to play guitar, I went to find a guitar teacher uh, and I came across Martin quite by chance, uh, Sheffield guy. Um, and I went to meet him and, and, and had numerous, numerous lessons with him. And, and I'm talking 20 plus years ago now, um, 25 years, it would be, yeah, um, that I've known him. He was in pro bands touring the world at one stage uh, with some really, really big names and doing what he did, but always a producer, always you know, uh, doing that, that side of things as well. So I've stayed in touch with him for years and years and years. Um, he now runs Mew Studios, which is in a development that's owned by uh, the stereophonics engineer uh, or what or was the, the stereophonics engineer. Um, and when it, so when I decided that I got enough material, he was always going to be the guy that I went to uh, because I, I, I trust him. Um, so many other people do as well. He, he's got such an ear. He's got such a creative mind mm. and, uh, I'm not going to say that it's it's not too twee to say this, but that the guy made what was a dream for me a reality, uh, you know, and that the patience of a saint, and you know, and, and he's also got the, uh, the you know the, the the imagination and the the uh, the, the creativity that, that, that you could you know is to die for. He just knows what to do, so he he took what I got and, and and elevated them. We all did, to be honest, didn't we? I mean, we it was a it was a long process because I couldn't do it in one single block. Um, bouncing it off the the album we did before the yeah, yeah, yeah. cover album, Absolutely. bounced it straight off of that and one off onto the other, straight into it. Yeah, and uh, and he was there all the way through, and he is putting up with all my silly ideas. Yeah, but he's exceptional. He is absolutely mm. exceptional. And uh, as I said, the next one's been. I'm, I'm writing the next. I'm writing songs all the time, but the next album is is in preparation now, and uh, it's going back to Martin. <laughs> That, 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 I can't say much. I can't give him a higher accolade than that, can I? Not really. 
So, Kitty, what about your debut album? Yeah, uh, to get on, on board from that, that's uh, as I said, it's called "Where uh, Wherever You Are," uh, which is uh, which is this, the, the the lyric from the, the from the song "Home." When I'm wherever you are, I found my way home. That's got that. And, on and her yeah, ribs. And, and as I say, it, Natalie has got it actually uh, tattooed on her ribs. Yes, yeah, she has. She's got that done, and uh, it's it was crikey, eight months in the making because we had to keep breaking it up and breaking it down uh i took my demos in i took the took the songs in we started to work on it so it was going to be a four track ep yeah we started the start the ambition the start of it was a four track ep martin sort of looked at it and went there's more than that here we've got an album we need to do this we really need to to to, to, to take it on uh so we did and he and we he got creative and he got me to uh extend myself and start to think of you know other things i mean uh you know to think of some of the other things that we did on there you know you know some of the one of the ambitions i'd always always had as a as a as a, as a singer as a player was to cover uh elton john's i'm still standing which i felt was probably a country song all day long in the making mm -hmm. and and he said said yeah you know let's do that so so we got together with uh got together with martin put it all together and then I was very lucky as I said I worked as a sound engineer I worked as a, a, a on the on the circuit for a long session long time player and all a session sort of player thing. for others so I, I called in a few favors called up a few friends and we ended up with with a a great list of musicians on that album to be honest um you know Dan Wright uh, I actually is in the breeze but Dan Wright is he was in collection and uh, plays with Dave Berry on the drums absolutely phenomenal drummer uh, he blasted every song out in basically one take. He just he, he was right on it for a start. Turned up ultra prepared for me. And uh, well, I think of uh, is it state of mind where you said I don't know if there's anything you can do with this, and he just nailed it in one take. He did absolutely did. He was right on the money from the start. We got uh, I mean Derek Thirlby. Uh, mm. Derek Thirlby is a he's one of the best pedal steel players. I'm not going to say in England or whatever. I think he's just one of the best pedal steel players. He is an exceptional musician. Um, I work with him a lot. Uh, I mean, on the when I to, when I've worked with uh, when I did the sound for Larry Gatlin and people like that. That collection. He was the musician that 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 Larry Gatlin had on stage with him. So you know that again, what higher accolade can I come out with than that? And and he stepped up, stepped in, and uh, and played all over the album for me. Absolutely lovely. Um, and then we got uh, through a friend of a friend in one of the most fortuitous uh, and, and, and bizarre ways of working, I rang uh, Dan Martin. I just said, I need a fiddle player. Can you help me? And he said, yeah, of course I can. Message this guy and he'll do it for you. So me not thinking, just message this guy. And I rang back. I said to Dan, and, and I said to Dan, do you think he'll be all right? He'll do it for me. He said, yeah, Russ, trust me. You'll love what he does. He's the house band player for, for the Grand Old Opry in Nashville. So I thought, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, I got you, you're telling me that this guy is going to be um, is going to be playing on my album. He's going to tell me to fuck her off, isn't he? He's gonna, so he's like, no, he'll do it, Russ. And uh, Eamon McLaughlin, he did. He messaged me back saying, yeah, I'd love to do it. Send me your tracks and I'll put you down some alternatives. And uh, and he did that. And about three, well, four weeks later, uh, these tracks came through and we... Uh, we went back into the studio, and this this was the, the, the this was the real sort of yeah this was a, this was defining the, oh, moment. God, here we go because we yeah. can't just we we got we pretty much got to where we thought we were going to stop at that point. Yeah, and so we thought, what's this guy done? So we put these tracks together, and it was just wow. <laughs> it was just like wow. Everyone we played, we were just like, we're going to have to just up the game on everything. And that's now, exactly what we? I said to I said to Martin at that point. Look, you know, I were doing this. I were working to a budget. I were working to a, a, a time scale. Um, this has changed the game. This is this has changed the game. I need to up my game. I need to Get put more, more in into it, it yeah. uh, and you know, and really take it as far as it's going to go, rather than have a dead stop in it that we've imposed. So, so we we spent a lot longer, um, you know. But, but I'm I'm so pleased with the outcome as a result of it. As I say, you, you get these quality players on there. Uh, the keyboard player that we had was John Trier, who is uh, works with Richard Hawley. Um, I mean, and the last time I, uh, I, I forget which band, last time I looked, he was, uh, he'd just been uh, jumped, jumped on a tour and he was off going with, uh, I don't know if you remember, Odyssey from the 80s. Uh, he'd just been signed up to play keyboard for them and he were off around Europe with them. So, you know, these are, these, these are great players. 
And so that that that's that's sort of what we did. And eventually it came out with my my humble offerings and these guys uh playing all over the top of it and and as I say Martin's genius and myself and Heather uh, and Martin spent many a many an hour sat in his studio, didn't we? Uh, really many did. a day, and it was so it, it, learning so much. Such an experience, and I can't wait to do it again. I've got to be honest. It's, it's a rare thing to be able to take as long as you want to record something. Because I've been recorded before quite a few times doing EPs where I have to blast out mm. four or five tracks in one day or in a weekend, yeah. having to get all of it done in one go, being able to sit and just mm. try everything, do mm. anything. As many times as you want, and as, as strange and avant garde as you want, as me and Martin kept going. I think I think the thing with Martin is he he was not going to let it uh, fall short. He wasn't going to let it fall short, and the same when it came to the mixing and the mastering and the engineering. Uh, I am yeah, I'm I'm really 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 pleased with it. You know, as a first time out, I'm I'm chuffed to bits. I really am. It helps that we had a good foundation to work from. You know, <laughs> given the songs were very good. Thank you. Yeah, and and it's and it's finding its feet, and uh, it's new to me. The whole original, uh, the whole original scene and playing originals is new to me. Uh, but you live and learn, you know. And uh, I think we've got some. We're starting to make make one or two avenues, and one or two interesting gigs are coming up. So uh, mm. you know, I've got some, you know, some, some good stuff to come this year. So I've got to, uh, I've got to double down and and, and make sure that we uh, we keep the momentum going. So. You tell me that you've been to Nashville, so can you tell me uh, what's that like? Uh -huh. uh, it's a different world, uh, a completely different world. Um, three times I've been now. Uh, 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 twice I've been yeah, now. Twice. The third time is this year. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, again. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to go feral in the boot barn. Yeah. So we, uh, the first time I went, we, 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 we arrived in Nashville, uh, part of a holiday. And we, uh, you arrive on Broadway. We stood outside the Ryman, looking down, and there's just this, this assault on your senses, and and it's, it's quite a, an experience because you've just you're looking down Broadway from the top of the hill right the way down to the, uh, the Cumberland River, and beyond, and on both sides, on multi stories, there are bars, there are restaurants, um, and there are shops. All, all got the windows open, and mm -hmm. they've all got live music being played, and it's. Down, you know, right the way down Broadway for as far as you can walk, as you can see, and people are just there, just soaking it up, taking in the music, having a good time, and and, and living the life, and the musicianship, and the quality of the singers, the quality of the players, the quality of the music, is otherworldly. It yeah. really, really is, uh, you know, and it, it's exceptional. And they all play for tips and play for the exposure, and, and that's how it works. It's not just like the fact that they do play so well they play everything anything, anything. Yeah. you can request anything and yep. it's the variety that they've got the variety of the musicians yep. themselves. like the first bar we ever went in they got like this woman on fiddle they got like the keys they got everything went in aj's bar alan jackson's bar they've got that three-piece rockabilly band where they got the upright bass and he's like swinging bass behind his head and all sorts of stuff like left that went to nudie's bar which is our favorite we've been back there uh, the second time we went because it, we just love it in there and they were doing like Stacy's mom and Metallica because they saw we were wearing my, I was wearing my battle jacket metal vest and they were like oh that's cool yeah we can do some Motley Crue if you want <laughs> sure you go for it I think yeah. we spent all of my holiday, holiday funding mm -hmm. tips just for that one band yeah. because we were like yeah play so more they, so, so on the one hand they, 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 Heather's throwing him a Motley Crue song followed by me saying can you do me some Vince Gill or can you do me do you some know Brad Paisley you know, and it's like and, and, and it's just like from one to another and they'll do that for three hours <laughs> and then they'll go off to another bar and do it again you know it's it, it, it's it's they, they, the, the quality is exceptional and to make it is exceptional. Um, mm. But that said, this time round, um, since the first time I've, uh, since the first time we went and second time we went, I've got to know one or two people more, uh, more acquaintances. And what I'm really looking forward to this year is going beyond that sort of outer veneer uh, and, you know, and getting into the grassroots level where, you know, a bit further away from the from from the Broadway and the other, and going to the sort of the, the, the some of the, the smaller bars and the suburb bars where the music's going to be just as good, but it's going to be you know a little bit more 
uh, down home a little bit more and not quite as inundated with yeah, hen parties you know and i can't i can't wait for that and hopefully uh as i say if i can get in touch with one or two other people that i've started to know out there uh you know they'll they'll give me some 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 pointers some places to go and uh, never know might even get up as well <laughs> that'd be nice that'd be nice so yeah uh, and it's if you've not been anybody that's anybody that's into country music they've just got to do it it's everything that you expect it to be and then some. and then some yeah yeah but it's also everything is coin operated. Everything's got a coin slot in it, so it takes some money. It is very pricey. Yeah. <laughs> it is very pricey. Yeah. So yeah, but yes, highly recommend it. And uh, but don't do what I did last time I went, which was to, to cut a long story short. Because of COVID, we were due to see uh, we were we were due to see a, a, a see Death Leopard actually for Natalie for her 18th birthday. Don't go mad. Stop it. No, stop Nick, it. Stop it. Because no, we. I need to justify it. Oh, for goodness sake. It was Def Leppard, Motley Crue, Joan Jett and Poison. Yeah. So we should have seen Come them. On. We should have seen them in Atlanta, which is a which is a, a, a five hour hop up from Florida where we were staying. Uh, but the uh, due to COVID and then the rescheduling of the tour, we wanted to go and do it for her, which we did in 22. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we went. So instead of seeing it when we should have done in twenty, we saw it in twenty two. By that time, things had changed round, and uh, they were in Indiana. They were in Indiana, and so the girls bought me tickets for Alan Jackson's uh, farewell tour. Surprise! And so the, the 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 deal was, and I'll let I'll, I'll let Heather tell you what the deal was. <laughs> yeah, we bought you tickets for Alan Jackson. I said I would buy you a shirt or some merch, and you were like, "Yay!" And I neglected to mention that you were still going to have to pay for the flight. And then when we got to Florida, you had to drive us to Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> and then from Savannah, Georgia, all the way over to Nashville, Tennessee, see the time jumpers, go up to Indiana and back again in one day so we could have another day in Nashville and then drive back via Kentucky because that was the only way we could get back. Kentucky was the other way. But anyway, uh, so we ended up, uh, Ruben, doing... In, in in five days, we ended up watching one, two, three, four, what, what, three, four gigs, four different gigs actually in five days, and doing Smart, nearly yeah. and doing nearly three thousand miles, <laughs> all driven by me. Uh, yeah, so you know, so never never going to fall for that again. Except I did. Yeah, he did last <laughs> year. Last year we bought him tickets to go see George Strait yeah. in Florida, in Florida. So the drive was a lot shorter this time. He still had to pay for the flights and the rental of the car, yeah. and still had to drive us there, but. Are you really going to complain when it was, well, I mean, it was supposed to be his last ever gig. He decided not to retire on the night, but it was George Strait, supported by Chris Stapleton, supported by Little Big Town. Yeah. What a gig. I mean. Yeah. And then and then for somebody like me who sat waiting and waiting for my, well, just brought my first album out, to go and watch that again, to go and sit with that, what more inspiration do you need than to go and do another one? I mean, for, he opened up with the first song you ever played on. The very the first circuit, song I ever it? played on the country circuit was Stars on the Water. Uh, yeah, and it was... Me and Nat had a big cry about it. Yeah, uh, and it just, it, it, he walked on stage. Uh, cool as he liked. Then it was, uh, the whole band were playing his Miles of miles of Texas as he walked on to, and then they just kicked into it, and it just, it's it's 90 degree heat in the in the in the in the, uh, in the middle of the trop tropics and uh, in an open top stadium in an open with top no shade. stadium but then you get goosebumps because that comes on what can you say <laughs> one of the best gigs i've ever been to yeah very definitely. much so very much so definitely so yeah was it worth the price of the airfare yeah all the way that's my justification can't wait to do it again next time that's it i'll find somewhere else <laughs> So, um, can you tell me, what's it like being an um, independent artist? It's new to me. This, um, it's, it's learning something. I'm, I'm so familiar with the, 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 the UK country circuit. I've been, I'm, I've been on that now for nine, well, for 20 years. Um, playing covers. That's great. In duos and bands and heading from country club to country club. It's, it kind of takes care of itself once you've been you become you know, the reputation comes through um you get rebookings you go back again you do the next one but you, you, you're recycling the covers and and it's great and i love doing that it's fabulous and there's some great music to be played as soon as you introduce your own music I, i'm looking at that but i'm also looking that you know when, when you go to the c to c in london when you go to the to watch the american artists that come over here it's a different audience you know, it's much more of a, a pop and a rock crowd, and it's much more 
that style of music that that is that really you know it does appeal to me it always always has i love country music and i love it in all its forms and you know I mean, back to martin again we, we've always had the, had the same philosophy on life with music if it sounds good it is good and it doesn't have to be pigeonholed it should be right you know i, I play music in a country style there's no doubt about that now everything i do everything i write is in that style but modern country takes so many shapes and forms and there's room for all of it and i want to be where that side is um and it's it's a very very different animal now because you, you you're not going out to people that and playing songs that they're familiar with. You've got to start introducing your own. There's a a lot more engagement. There's a lot more, and it's new people. It is well. new people, so there's a lot more engagement. There's a lot more people to explain yourself to, uh, to be quite honest. And it, it's things that I'm having to learn to do. Uh, you know, self promotion is not my greatest forte. I'll hold both my hands up and say that, um, but. You know, it, it's something that has to be done, and you know, I'm I'm, I'm fortunate that uh, I've got one or two people around me that are good at social media, so they're they're, they're generating that for me as well. Uh, in fact, uh, Ken Meakin and, and CMSM, the people, they they've helped me massively by getting radio mm-hmm. play and airplay for me and and promoting for that. There's so much more work I've got to do on that myself, so they can they can do better for me. Um, and, and really, it's it's just a case of putting it's, it's putting myself out there and finding the roots into these different venues and, and going back to what I used to do, which is play acoustic guitar with Heather with me and uh, and you know and do acoustic sessions, go out and play it wherever you can, and and that's that's the ambition for this year to make a bigger mark, mm. uh, make a more make a more indelible mark and more one that's going to be uh, one that's going to stick around and become more prominent and, and get the name known. That that's. Yeah. That's kind of where it is. It's if if you stop, the whole thing stops. It's mm. as simple as that. And you know, and and you know, it, it's a it's a re-education. And as I say, I'm not I'm not I'm not 19 or 20 year old coming into it with my eyes wide open. And, and I, I'm I'm fortunate that I've 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 been around business for a while in my life. And uh, you know, so really, you know, I, I understand what I've got to do. And uh, and it's trying to fit it all in and trying to rejuggle my life. Uh, to get there without impacting too much on, on, on other things as well, I guess. So it's, uh, th- there's plenty, there's plenty to do, but I will do it because I love the freedom of it. You know, you, you write into pl- and run playing what you're going to play. And that, that is, you know, as I said, to, a, to a, maybe a different audience that, uh, that are expecting you to play, you know, sixties and seventies country, uh, this song or that song, I guess when it's your own music, you know, you, you've got that little bit more freedom and, the, and, and, and it's a different audience because they come in to listen to something new and that's what I love. It's a strange thing with it. I've, I've Having done that before where I started in a pub rock band doing just covers and then becoming an original, it, it, it's one of those things, no matter who you are or what you're doing, when you go from the covers only to the originals, you start from zero again. Mm, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. As I said, I've got no, uh, I've got no ego to work or anything like that. I just want to play the music. That's that's really where I want to be. I like to and, play. You know, and you know, and for me, I said it already, but I'll say it again. Having my entire family with me when I do so, it's it, it's the best feeling ever. You know, and and Heather's you know, a big part of my ambition is that Heather does well. And so if you know, if I can if I can get to a point and Heather can jump off the back of that, you know, fantastic. That'll do for me. Uh, she's she's a great player. She's a great singer. Thank you. You're still better than me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. So that you know that that's kind of that that's really where I want to be, uh, Ruben. And doing things like this is new to me, but I, I must admit, I, I love meeting people like yourself and, uh, and and talking about music. What's better to talk about? Sharing your music with others. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So finally, Kate Evans says, where can I find you on social media? Yeah, you can. Uh, RussellKitchen.com or RussellKitchenMusic.com. Uh, either or, that's, the, that's the primary one. I'm on Facebook at Russell Kitchen Music. Uh, if you go onto the website, and I'm going to look now to make sure I get the right one. <laughs> We've not reached the point of having a, uh, a ready-to-roll uh, sort of advertising segment. It is russellkitchen.com and unfortunately my name is spelled diff- slightly differently. It's Russell yeah. Russell with one L and kitchen with an I-N. Uh, but if you go to russellkitchen.com, it's th- there's a link tree on there that takes you to all the uh, all the streaming sites. Uh, if you're on 
Spotify, you're on Apple Music, you're yeah. on uh, Amazon Music, Amazon. Ooh, you're it's on, on Amazon. Yeah, it's on Ooh. iTunes Store. Uh, I think it's on YouTube because it auto generates. It is, yeah. Yeah. And all the videos are available on your YouTube. Yeah, a YouTube channel as well. It's all all Russell Kitchen music. Um, it's all it's all there. As I said, the, the YouTube's a new experience to me, and uh, thoroughly enjoy doing that as well. So uh, yeah, it's all it's all available. And uh, as I said, the the response that I've had this year has blown me away. Uh, you know, for, in terms of an independent artist, to see to, to to put this out with no prior warning and no prior experience of it, and then to find you know, as I said, uh, videos getting five k views, and you know, some of the songs falling, for example, is, is nearly thirty thousand streams. I'm more, I'm, I'm delighted with it. Live your dreams was uh, UKCountryRadio.com's most listened to for two months. Falling was most listened to for two months as well. So I think I've had two number ones on the on the UKCountryRadio.com this year. So that's that's kinda that's kinda nice. Live your dreams had you actually live in your dreams. It absolutely did. Yeah. And you could say that falling is absolutely flying. <laughs> Woo! That's a tagline right there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm being judged. Um, thank you both for letting me uh, chat to you today today. Ruben, it's been an absolute pleasure, and thank you for your patience in setting this up. I know it's taken us a while. <laughs> Enjoy your rest of your day. Yeah, you too. Thanks a lot now. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.